from the United States of America. Stand by American. Stand by servicemen and women of the United Nations. Here's mail call. One big package of words, music, and laughter delivered to you by the stars from whom you want to hear in answer to the request you send to Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Well, tonight's mail call is dedicated to the servicemen and women from the state of Minnesota. And standing at the microphone now to act as your mistress of ceremonies is the pride of Grand Rapids, Minnesota, singing, clang, 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 went the trolley from her latest picture, the lovely young star, Judy Garland. gang all over the world, especially you guys and gals from good old Minnesota. It's great to be with you, and I hope you enjoy this little gopher get-together. I beg your pardon, my pretty maid, but is this a private taffy pool, or can anybody tug some and leave some? Well, Bing Crosby, I'm glad to see you. Bing, this is indeed a pleasant surprise. Well, I'm happy to be here, Judith. I wouldn't want to blow a chance to say hello to you and to all my friends from Minnesota. The grand old state. Oh, have you been there? Oh, yes, yes. Many times have I fished in Minnesota's sky-colored lakes. Matter of fact, I was up there fishing with Bob Hope only last summer. Did you have any luck? Oh, yes. First day, Hope landed a 125-pound blonde. 
It was quite a catch. Yeah, but her dad was a game warden. Had to throw her back. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I'll bet you'll never go to Minnesota again. On the contrary, Judy. I plan to go duck hunting there this very fall. <laughs> How can you go duck hunting? It's, it's pretty tough to get shotgun shells, isn't it? Oh, I don't need shells or a gun. I just crank my portable Victrola and lay a Sinatra record on them. <laughs> Just a minute, Bing. I think Sinatra's voice is very pleasant and soothing. To human beings, maybe, but to ducks, fatal. <laughs> Murdered many a mallard, that boy. <laughs> oh, fancy that. Anyhow, Bing, how do you happen to be such a duck hunter? Oh, we Crosby's have been hanging around the blinds for years. As a matter of fact, my, my grandfather, <laughs> Grandpa was a very famous duck hunter. He went duck hunting all the time. Do tell. The old boy was a pioneer. He came to the coast with my grandmother, who was a champion swimmer. A swimmer? Mm hmm What did she do? Retrieve for your grandfather? <laughs> yes, she did. That's what she did. Never chewed up a bird in her entire life. <laughs> I can still see Granny after a hunting trip, sitting by the fireplace, picking buckshot out of a buzzle. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> now, now look, Bing, uh, have you got a song for the boys and girls? I sure have. I, I'd like to run through Love, Love, Love. Well, good, good, good. May I have a bell note, please? Imagine you imagining that you love me. Starting on a family tree. Imagine starting on a family tree. The papa is you and the mama is me. If your heart goes bumpity bump. It's love, love, love. Then if the throat comes up with a lump, it's love, love, love. If the knees go knocking in knock, it's love, love, love. Then if you could like the cuckoo in the clock, it's love, love, love. Imagine you, imagine you, and then any wife. Imagine eating with the pork and a knife. I wish you would be for the rest of your life. If your heart goes bumpity bump, it's love, love, love. And if the throat comes up with a lump, it's love, love, love. If your knees go knockity knockity knock, it's love, love, love. And if the cuckoo likes the cuckoo in the clock, sung by Bing Crosby, a duck hunter of note and notes. And in a voice not unlike that of a Canadian honker in this place. <laughs> you know, Judy, I was wondering if I ever hit your, your hometown in Minnesota. I mean, where did the stork tell you to bail out? I was born in a little town called Grand Rapids, Minnesota, Bing. Grand Rapids, eh? Wait a minute. 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 I wish to challenge the veracity of that statement. This must be the cyclone season. Well, right? Jimmy Durante! <laughs> Jimmy, did you say you don't believe I was born in Grand Rapids, Minnesota? Precisely. The metropolis of Grand Rapids happens to be in the sovereign state of Michigan. I know it's Grand Rapids, Michigan, because that's the label on all my genuine antique furniture. <laughs> There is a Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Rubbish. Follow the Rollin and Tomitsu. 
I don't even believe there's such a place as Minnesota. A likely name for a state, Minnesota. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, now, Jimmy, do you mean... You never heard of a state called Minnesota? He talks with such nonchalance. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try and trap me, bingo. The only two states I'm personally acquainted with are New York and Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> Drop the subject then, Jaime. What state were you born in? Complete nudity, naturally. <laughs> no, I mean, what state of the Union? That has never been proven. <laughs> and the fight, the, and the fight to claim me is still raging. New York says I was born in Texas. Texas says I was born in Vermont, and Vermont says I was never born. It's a mess. <laughs> I think you were born, Jimmy. I'll lay six and a half to five. You're darn right I was born. I often heard my pater remark Your that... Your pater? Yeah, you know, my brother. <laughs> I'm a little educated Jew. Oh, oh, your brother, huh? Who'd you think he was, my old man? <laughs> well, what did your pater remark, Jimmy? Well, my father was pacing up and down in the hospital when out came the nurse. Yes? She says, Mr. Durrani... Congratulations, you're the father of a bouncy nine-pound nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy, now that you've been born by a nose, I think a little music is in order. Gang, I'd like to do a new song about a Navy outfit who's really doing big things. No job is too tough for them. Believe me, they live up to their motto. Can do, will do, did. So, for the CBs, and with the assistance of the Armed Forces Radio Orchestra, can do, will do, the song of the sea bees. Fellas, and you too, Judy. That was mighty stirring. Well, thank you for them kind words, Dr. Crosby. Nothing, Judith. When you vocalize, it is only fitting that I should wrap my rack in the complimentary manner. <laughs> that guy is a toothsayer. Got <laughs> <laughs> to stick around for that one line. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is a toothsayer. Said fake. Such a dear, sweet boy. Yeah. How about a bit of metal locking from you? I'm glad to oblige, Judy. Shall we say amor, amor? <laughs>
another word with me and so clear My lips try to whisper sweeter things in your ear But somehow or other nothing sounds quite so dear As this soft caressing word I know I too would like to add my accolades. Lay it right in here. <laughs> but now, Judy, I'd like to say a few words to the groaner in private, if I'm not too uh, referendum. Oh. oh, of course, Jimmy. I'll be only too filibuster to oblige. <laughs> Thanks. Very dispensary of you. Let's have it, uh, Jimmy. What seems to be the trouble? It's like this, Bing. Here I am in Hollywood, and the more than I get here, I'm a sensation, a terrific success. Really? Yeah, I got a room. <laughs> That's great. Then what's the beat? It's my personal life. It's a shambles. Wherever I go, the finger of scorn is pointed at me. I can't face my friends. How come? I ain't got a butler. <laughs> you ain't got no butler, huh? The no. shame of it, the shame of it, the utter I should overwhelming shame. Yes. <laughs> Give him an inch, they take eight lines. <laughs> Please repeat that line, Mr. Bingo. The overwhelming shame of it. Yes, all I get from them fair weather friends of mine now is mockery and derision. But from you, Bing, I expect there's something warmer. Sarcasm, at least. <laughs> Don't you see how it is, Bingo? I want to be a gentleman. I just got to be a gentleman. Why? Because that's what it says on the door of my room. <laughs> well, now, not everyone can sleep in a tiled bedroom. But, Jimmy, the health problem, being what it is, could I get you a butler? Where could I get him? I just saw you talking to one, that fellow over there. Oh, you mean Arthur Treacher? Yeah. <laughs> he looks like Ned Sparks in a bad mood. <laughs> but he's a great butler, I know. I've seen him butler. Oh, Arthur Treacher isn't a butler. He's an actor. You've only seen him butler for people in pictures. So what? If he can help Ronald Coleman on with his pants, pour tea for Norma Shear, and Simonize Donamichi's teat. <laughs> I expected that to do no good. <laughs> He's good enough for me. Well, I don't know how much good it'll do, but I'll introduce you to him. Arthur, Arthur Treacher, would you step over here for a moment? Certainly, old boy, glad to oblige. Arthur, I'd like to have you know Jimmy Durante. Why? <laughs> One moment, Jeeves. Don't hand me none of that drawing room lip. Well, there's no 
part of this. I shall join Miss Garland in the dispensary. You may call me. And now, and now I'm a good man, let's get to the business at hand. I'm looking for a gentleman's gentleman. Well, so far, you're two gentlemen short. <laughs> Precisely why you are here. I admit that I need a little polish. A little polish? You could use a gallon of glow coat. <laughs> what a delightful sense of humor. No doubt you've heard the old maxim, uh, brevity is the soul of wit. Of course. Well, shut up. <laughs> Answer me this. Will you or will you not be my butler? My dear sir, this is a farce. I am not a butler. I'm a motion picture actor. A dubious career at best. <laughs> Look what pictures did to me. Typed me. Every picture I was in, they made me play a fellow with a big nose. Why? <laughs> It's quite obvious. And get it off my chin. <laughs> Pardon me, I was carried away. <laughs> but Butlin is the only job for you, teacher. Feature is the name. <laughs> Pardon me. My dear sir, even if I were to give up the cinema and become a butler, I most assuredly would never enter the service of a creature of your ilk. And what, pray, is wrong with my ilk? <laughs> Boorish, crass, overwhelmingly illiterate, and completely repugnant. How much of that is good? <laughs> None of it. It was purely a commentary on your lack of breeding. And if you tell me you breed fine through that great beak of yours, I shall scream. <laughs> Teacher? Treacher is the name, sir. Treacher. <laughs> to err is but human. <laughs> Go and get your salary. You're fired. What's more, you get no reference from me. Goodbye. I can think of no more desirable culmination to this repulsive association. Well, now that you've apologized, I'll keep you on. <laughs> Look, teacher. <laughs> I'm in a spot. you got to help me out. I appeal to your baser instincts. <laughs> well, Mr. Durante, I suppose one should lend a hand to one's fellow human, though I use the word loosely. <laughs> Spoken like an Englishman and an alley. <laughs> I'm just a tool of an educated brain. <laughs> right, right. Now, as regards the duties of your butler, I presume you'll want him to serve tea each afternoon? Never touch the stuff. You never drink tea? Nope. Them little bags get stuck in my throat. <laughs> oh, quite old like that. Now, um, now, now, uh, tell me about your tub. <laughs> My tub. Yes. You, you, you tub daily, of course. <laughs> Repeat that line. It's getting rather tiresome. You tub daily, of course. If the water's warm, I tub. If it's not, I basin. <laughs> Mr. Durante, I, I don't know where I could find a man you'd be happy with, and distinctly vice versa. Happiness ain't everything, Mr. Teacher. Treacher is the name, sir. <laughs> Money is what makes the world go round, and I'm prepared to pay a bottle of a huge sum of $18 a week. $18 a week? Why, I paid my man $100 a week right up till the day he left me. You say he left? Yes. And the job pays a hundred dollars a week? That's right. Brother, you've got a new butler. Well, Arthur, congratulations on snagging a butler like Durandy. I can't wait to come over to your house to dinner and have a... I have a beautiful new green dress that split pea soup will look lovely on. Oh, don't worry. I'll see that James doesn't serve the soup. 
I'll have the maid take care of that. Okay, and I'll take care of the maid. <laughs> How about a little song, Julie? How about you limping over a Largo for me? Oh, again with the singing? Well, you do a pretty good job of it. My mother says, but I like to take a whack at acting. I really do. I like to lay off the singing for a while. I say, you're, you're joshing, of course. No, I'd like to be an actor, but I, I never get a chance. You're a joshing, of course. <laughs> I know, Bing, you never get a chance to sing with me. What do they want from me? Melody. I'm standing in the joint the other night, minding my own business, when a guy walks in and hollers, let's have some music, and drops a nickel in my noose. <laughs> well, it's those movie producers that are doing this thing to us, Jimmy. And you too, Judy. That's right. I've always wanted to do a straight dramatic part. Me too. There's only one thing for the three of us to do. I'm reading your mind, Bingo. We'll go on strike. Exactly. No more singing. We'll make them give us dramatic pop. Right. I still think you three characters would be extremely blah without your voices. <laughs> A critic? Blah? <laughs> Let's tell them off, Bingo. Okay. <laughs> The canary and the nose. It's time they let us have our little fling. I'd like to be the heavy with designs on little Nell. I'd like to be the wistful one for whom they told the bell. I'd like to use my profile for its beauty, not to smell. And let those producers go to you nowhere. I'm wicked. I'm wistful. And I'm wonderful. Why should we have to sing in all our shows? Barrymore and Bernard didn't have a doggone thing. On the glow of the canary. Of the nose. Uh, I'm a black eye. I'm pensive. And I'm beautiful. <laughs> it's acting what we bought without a song. Let hope go on alone. The dream is calling me, forsooth. I want a part so sad I'd never have to show it to. They love me down at Duffy's. Archie says I'm very cute. Let's give three cheers for Edwin Booth. Ra, ra, ra. I'm evil. I'm fragile. As to say. <laughs> I still insist you're better when you sing. Make sure he may have something. We bow to your opinion. <laughs> and we're happy to remain. Just you. Jimmy. And the baby. A ring dang doodle and a bow. You know, every time I go back to Minnesota, I wonder why nobody ever wrote a hit song about my home state. Something like. Minnesota, here I come. How about neath blue skies above Minnesota? <laughs> well, the skies aren't always so blue up there in the wintertime, Bing. I remember once when I was a kid, it was 40 degrees below zero. I wouldn't know. I'm a Malibu man myself. Ah, <laughs> uh, but the summers. The summers in Minnesota are swell. This is northernmost part of the United States, you know, and the June nights are only a few hours long. You call that good? <laughs> All that sunshine and the fertile ground makes Minnesota great farming country. Just ask any GI who ever ran a harvester down the Red River Valley. He'll tell you the kind of crops they raise. And fellas, that M1 of yours probably started out as a chunk of iron ore up around Hibbing. That letter you wrote home last night may have been on paper from our great north woods. It's a swell state, Minnesota, and I'm proud it's my home. And I know there's a few hundred thousand of us who feel the same way. We've got to pull together, we Minnesotans. For just one more duration, that's all. Here's love and good luck. Well, that's it, fellas. The end of another mail call letter. Signatures include Judy Garland, Bing Crosby, Jimmy Durante, Arthur Treacher, the Music Maids and Lee, the Hugh Martin Singers, and yours truly, Harlow Wilcox. This program was arranged with the cooperation of the Hollywood Victory Committee. Another mail call will be coming your way the next time you hear...
This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.
Thank you very much. Very much. <laughs> well, I'm a little nervous, but uh, I'll get over that. See, I've been asked to do something, and uh, as a matter of fact, I've been asked to tell something about my life story, how I became a pianist, and so on and so forth. And, uh, well, see, I was, might as well begin with the beginning. I was born, <laughs> I was born, uh, Were you? yeah, <clears throat> and uh, when my mother saw me, she was taken to the hospital. <laughs> I grew up, I started to grow up, and I grew up, and I... <laughs> Actually, I wasn't like other children from four to six. See, I was seven already then. <laughs> and, uh, I remember this, this is a very important incident that happened. See, I was sitting, I remember it as if it were 30 years ago. I was sitting in my room, I was just a little boy, I was sitting in my room, and uh, my father came in. See, my father was much older than I was. He came in. <laughs> and I sat there on, on the right. Yeah, he came in from the other. I didn't know he came in from the other side. See, he was left-handed. But I, I <laughs> sat there. And he came in, and I can see it for me as if it were 30 years ago. He came in, he said, uh, well, as first of all, he came in, and he was uh, very angry because he found me in uh, front of a roaring fire. And that made him very angry because we didn't have a fireplace. <laughs> well, there I was, and there he was. He said, he said Borger! See, my father could never remember my first name. <laughs> he said, Borger, I'm ashamed of you. When I was your age, I was 11. <laughs> That's when the whole thing started. That was way back in Denmark. You know, Denmark is a very small country, you know. Everybody lives in houses there because they... <laughs> when they get out of the houses, they're in Sweden, see? <laughs> well, anyway, he wanted me to play the piano. And the first number, that's the one I would like to play now. The first number I ever learned to play. My sister was my first teacher. And she taught me the minute was by Chopin. By the first number, as the first number I ever learned to play while she taught me the piano. She was my first teacher and a very, very good teacher. She taught me the piano. And she was, uh, <laughs> the minute was by Chopin was the first number she ever taught me while we, and she is a brilliant piano player herself, a world famous piano player, and I'm very pleased to introduce her. Her name is. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is ridiculous. She, she's my only sister. Wait a minute, maybe. GP me. I've spoken to her so often. <laughs> well, it won't make any difference. I recognize her when I see her. And here's the minute waltz by Chopin. It won't take long. <laughs> Oh, by the way, the Steinway people asked me to tell you that this is a Baldwin piano. <laughs> Minute walk by Chopin. <laughs> She was only my half sister. <laughs> well, I would like to, as a matter of fact, I would like to, I'll have to, and, uh, but that can wait. And I will, uh, afterwards, because first I would like to show you how to compose a modern song hit. As a matter of fact, before I do that, I would like to ask you, is there anything you would like to hear particularly? <laughs> what was that? Blue hey. Serenade. Anything else? Holiday. Yes, anything else? Uh, come on, we have time. That's all right, it doesn't make any difference. I know exactly what I'm going to play, but it sounds... 
something. Modern song hit. My father, it'll be two dollars extra. <laughs> um, you know that uh, the old composers, they were sitting up day and night waiting for the inspiration. And uh, that was that. Now the modern composers. <laughs> <laughs> the modern composers, they sit up day and night too and uh, wait. And, uh, <laughs> well, sometimes. And then. All of a sudden, nothing happens. And then they do what I'm going to show you now. I might as well do it this way. I have a pile of music in front of me. Here are all the old uh, masters and... Uh, <laughs> we have here all the old masters and... Uh, do when they are going to compose a modern song hit is to take a pair of scissors and this pile of music and now let us see what we can see what we can get some in inspiration from now let's see first we have here Tchaikovsky let's play a little by Tchaikovsky <laughs> a chance. This one will never be popular. Take it off. <laughs> ah, here's the little Schubert. <laughs> Too old. Let's take the other side. <laughs> Beautiful. Now we can use a few bars of it and we'll cut it up. <laughs> they are big scissors, but it's a long number anyhow, so there's me. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, trim it a little bit. <laughs> sit. Cut it out here a little bit. Little. Oh. Now let's see what we've got. <clears throat> Play that way. <laughs> I think I missed one here on the floor. <laughs> here it is. <clears throat> Just found it. I had to cut it in half. <laughs> Put it on there this time. Now we need one more. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see. Next one is Ah Franz Schlitz. <laughs> should be good. Chopin, you know, it's the fellow with the polonaise. <coughs> That's a little too gay. Let's get something... Uh... Strauss! This is wonderful. Just a 
I'm in it. Well, that's what it says. Oh, I'm sorry, I have the music upside down. Just take a corner of this. <laughs> That's it. Now we have the serenade, the serenade by Schubert and the Blue Danube by Strauss. We just maybe need a few bars for the finale, and we will take Shostakovich. <laughs> Shostakovich. Just a moment. <laughs> he gets sober. I think we have enough. <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, let me see now, what is it? it doesn't say much here, you know, it's a little difficult to, oh yeah, this is a serenade by Schubert and the, 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 the Blue Danube by, is I'm colorblind, the Blue Danube <laughs> by Strauss. We'll put them together now and call it the Blue Serra Danube by Strubert. <laughs> And here's how it sounds. If.
too. And now, fellows, comes another gent that plays the piano a bit. He also does a little composing on the side. Just to name a few of the songs he's written, there's Body and Soul, Coquette, Out of Nowhere, and a few more. And here he is with a medley of his great tunes, Johnny Green. He also does a little composing on the side. Just to name a few of the songs he's written, there's Body and Soul, Coquette, Out of Nowhere, and a few more. And here he is with a medley of his great tunes, Johnny Green.
that was wonderful. All those tunes bring back memories. You keep on writing songs like those and the world will keep right on singing them. And now, gang, I see that it's almost closing time, so let's put the lid on this session by calling the charioteers back for an encore. Come on out here, fellows, and give us a little of Lily Bell. Says autumn rain when summer is through. Tell me who Lily Bell would you like a sunbeam on a rainy day? You can catch a sunbeam when she smiles. me to go ashore. I've had a wonderful time aboard the good ship mail call tonight, and I hope it's been as much fun for you. This is your skipper, Kathy Downs, reminding you to keep those letters coming. So long, and smooth sail. Forces 
Radio Service, the voice of information and education.